untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Pack one, pick one. The Soul Herder is kind of tempting to maybe set up a uh, blue-white flicker value deck. Seems like a, a good kind of starting point for a potential archetype. Although, of course, it does commit us to two colors. If we want to go for like a mono-white aggro strategy, there's a couple of good options between Savior, Mikaeus, and even the Sentinel. Also a fan of Ulvamald Hydra. Actually didn't check if Field of the Dead was in the cube. One might presume that it is. So Hydra is always powerful. Split between Soul Herder and Hydra here as maybe the best value options. Not sure how much people will respect the Field of the Dead strategy. Maybe I should actually start out with Field of the Dead before committing to Hydra. I'm gonna try Soul Herder. But again, can't really go wrong with a lot of these first picks. Okay, second pack. I do value my mana fixing quite highly, so like a Temple of Enlightenment would be nice. Breeding Pool can also give us access to green, there's quite a few good Enter the Battlefield abilities in green. And then a Glass Pool Mimic, also nice for copying value creatures. I think I'm leaning Temple for mana fixing. Hopefully we'll wheel like a Glass Pool Mimic or a breeding pool. Anything else in the pack that's particularly powerful? Eh, this pack's a bit weaker than the first one. Okay, third pack. Seeing a lot of mana fixing still. Couple good red cards. So mono reds might be open, but Trapped Adversary is also pretty decent. And still kind of synergizes with Soul Herder in the sense that we can play it early and then later maybe flicker it and then pay the extra mana. Yeah, it's just a good curve filler at pretty much any point, so seems fine. Ooh, Thraktusk. So definitely a reason to splash green with a Soul Herder. Don't know if I can pass that up. Make a 3-3 beast, gain 5 life every time. There's also Scholar, if we want to go a bit bigger. Not sure if I'm going to have enough instants and sorceries to get back. And then Hinterland Harbor would be amazing to get back if we take Thraktusk. Professor Onyx, also one of the better cards here, and of course Lightning Bolt. But I'll take the Thraktusk. So Band Flicker is kind of what we're aiming for. And even though Asika's Chariot got the slight nerf here, still seems like a good card. We can turn it into a creature and then flicker it with Soul Herder to make an extra cat. Just a good card in general. And then we're passing up on a Counterspell, which we're not all that interested in. We're more of a tap-out strategy. A Hall would be good, and Into the Royal would be fine too. But I'll take my Chariot. Next up, not hating a Wolf Willow Haven for a bit of acceleration. Cathars Crusade could be fun too. Has a bit of synergy with creatures entering the battlefield. Can be a little slow, but it does take over if you get it going. And then there's Fading Hope for a bit of interaction, which we might need as well. Yeah, all three of these are fine. Crusade is definitely the kind of greedier, more fun pick if it works out. So I guess I'll try it out and then we'll see how aggressive the cube ends up being. Ooh, some very good options here between Elite Spellbinder and Surveyor. Surveyor would help me fix my mana as well. Spellbinder potentially more powerful individually. But kind of liking the Surveyor for fixing. Especially if we're gonna play three colors here. Next up, a Brutal Cathar seems perfect. Also a fan of Thraben Inspector. 
So Brutal Cathar, I guess not really something we want to flicker necessarily, because then the opponent gets their creature back. But it is just a good, you know, individual card. Threadbin Inspector maybe a bit more synergistic, gives me something cheaper to play. Yeah, you know what? Thraven Inspector is one of those innocuous looking cards that actually ends up being quite important. So I'll take the Inspector. But uh, another close call. So I believe... Let's see, is, is this the pack with Breeding Pool? I think that's the next one. Breeding Pool and uh, Mystic. This was our pack one, pick one. Yeah, I guess I'll take uh, Savior. Don't think we're gonna need Emergent Sequence all that much. And Savior to protect a key creature like Soul Herder seems nice. Alright, so we did not wheel the Breeding Pool or the Mystic. Ministrant is kind of a curve filler, Bubble Snare. So nothing too exciting. All right, wield consider some good red cards still left, and an explore. So I didn't see a ton of blue. Kind of surprised to have the consider on the wheel. So maybe I should go with the explore. Could also take a godless shrine to kind of speculate on some black ETB effects. I'll take the explore. Who nice hinterland harbor is excellent. Sarah's good too, but I'll take the fixing. And uh, maybe we'll need the Swarm Shambler. Okay. So, first pack went alright. Hopefully we get some more good Flicker creatures. We're kind of looking more like green-white splash blue at this point, but... Typically I would imagine this deck is... Blue-white as a base. And... Uh, not a bad pack to open. Temple Garden kind of jumps out, and then Sphinx's Revelation not going to be easy to cast unless we pick up more ramp. Since, yeah, we're not really a ramp deck. The Ranger class could also be fine. I think it might be Temple Garden here. Yeah, hopefully we can pick up more creatures that draw cards when they enter the battlefield, so we don't need a card like Sphinx's Revelation. Also wouldn't mind wheeling a Primal Might. Okay, nice. Small Drifters, exactly what we needed. Would also love to get a Karuga on the wheel. But these are the types of creatures we want to play and flicker. And there's more we can hope to wheel here between some petal grove, maybe even a suspicious towway. Ooh, hello Yorion. Can hope to wheel farmland. There's a Lanor Elves too, Mindstone of course. But uh, I don't think we can pass up Yorion. Don't think we're gonna companion Yorion, but we'll see. Ooh boy. This pack is stacked. Got a Charming Prince, Circle, Champion of Wits. Probably not going to need Oracle as a win condition. I'm tempted by this Teleportation Circle, and then there's a decent chance we wheel Prince or Champion of Wits, I feel. I would rather have the Engine card that's more difficult to interact with, as opposed to, you know, the small creature. And looking at my curve, it's not like I have a ton of 4-drops. So yeah, let's take the Circle and hopefully we'll wheel something. Okay, a land is always good. Probably fine passing the Florahedron. And the Liberator. Pathway it is. Next up. Can go wrong with Temple of Plenty. Sternheim Unleashed is a powerful one too, if we want to just take the individually powerful card. But it feels like we're going to get enough good flicker synergies that we can make it work. And at that point I think I just want a good mana base. 
All right, so this one's close. Sanctum, Green Seeker. Green Seeker, just a good value creature that can help us hit our land drops turn after turn. Botanical Sanctum, just good mana fixing too. Even though our early plays are mostly green and white. Um, Close one. I guess I'll take the Green Seeker since I don't have a ton of twos yet. And we took quite a bit of mana fixing earlier, so I think I can afford to. Here. Not really a great Pelt Collector deck, but still a fine card in most creature decks. And we do go up to 5 with Thrak Dusk. So, yeah, Pelt Collector's fine. There's also Shepherd to maybe bounce one of our permanents back and get some more value. Can save one of my creatures too. In a pinch. I'll try the Pelt Collector. And then the Acolytes. 2-2 two, two with Reach and Lifelink and Outlasts. Yeah, it's just a Curve Filler, I suppose. Or we can take a Tezzeret for a bit of card advantage. Yeah, this seems like a good 2-drop and Mana Sink. Even though I don't really want to flicker something that has a counter on it. Wield Keruga. That looks good. Another way to draw cards upon entering the battlefield. Sell past the stowaway, which also would have been decent. Ooh, and we wield elf too. Okay. So it's looking like green white as a base, splashing blue for Soul Herder and Moldrifter, pretty much. But we can maybe pick up a few more blue cards later. Shadow Spear is not bad. Maybe we'll need Oracle as a win condition. But I doubt it. Best Cherry is not bad. Don't think we need the Axe. Maybe I'll play a Bodyguard. Okay, so going into the final pack. Yeah, mostly looking to fill out the curve early at 2 and 3 mana. So more stuff with good ETB value is welcome. And we open some goodies, including Vivian, which can help us find creatures. And nice removal with a minus 3. Banishing Light, always kind of a safe pick. Don't think we're ramping up to Saros Emissary necessarily. And there's a Mind Flayer, although if we flicker Mind Flayer, then the opponent gets their original creature back. So I think I'm leaning Vivian here. Banishing Light a close second. Although I do have a lot of fives al already, so that's kind of an argument for maybe taking the Banishing Light. But to be fair, Moldrifter I could also evoke, so I'll take a Vivian. Oof. Can I give up Great Henge? Probably not. The alternative would be... Like what, a Conclave Tribunal? I'll take a Henge. Alright, so now that we have Henge, might want to look for more high-powered 3 and 4 drops. And Henge also plays well with um, the Teleportation Circle, since it will re-trigger the card draw effect. This pack has a Croaking Counterpart, which plays well with ETB creatures. Key to the Archive is also difficult to pass up as just a good ramp and mana fixing artifact. And uh, there's a good chance we wield the Croaking Counterpart anyway. And then, yeah, like Malevolent Hermit would be fine. Shark Typhoon, of course, a good card as well. Take the key. Yeah, key plus Teleportation Circle, we can flicker artifacts too. Here, I'm liking Welcoming Vampire. We can flicker smaller things. Can draw me more cards. Seems awesome if we flicker Chariot, make a 2-2 token, draw a card with Welcoming Vampire. Don't know if I need the Perilous Mirror as like an early creature against aggro decks. Our deck is kind of slow. But we'll go with a Vampire. Okay, Mana War is probably the pick here. As much as I like the pathway, even a crossroads, 
It's good fixing. Probably don't need Vastwood Surge too much. Yeah, Mana War seems good. We're a bit light on creature interaction. Oof, another tough pick here. Angel of Invention, good with Fabricate, as we can make two servos and keep flickering it. Also very good with Cathars Crusade if we end up playing it. Lay Claim, kind of expensive, but can be powerful. Harvest, always kind of a safe pick. And Sentinel could help us ramp, although we're kind of light on early creatures to enable it. So I'll take the Angel. Okay. Despite a nerf, Aspirant is still quite powerful. There's an Augur as well. Can help me hit my land drops and a seal away for maybe a bit of interaction. Probably between Augur and Luminarch. Might actually be Augur here, since it also gives me an extra 3-drop for Keruga. And hitting land drops seems nice in this deck. And... Uh, Let's see here. Shale is an option at two. Could take a Lair of the Hydra. Not that I really need a mana sink since we have so many ways to use our mana once we start drawing cards. I guess Shale could be fine as kind of a curve filler. And probably not going to have room for Mind Flare. Dancing Sword also doesn't seem good. Great here. So I don't think this pick is going to matter too much. Not enough instants and sorceries for Augur. Probably not a Legion's landing deck either. Did wheel the Hermit, I suppose? Sure. All right, so gonna have to make some cuts. Don't need sulfur falls. Picked up a few dual lands. Our deck is green, white, splashing blue. Might have a few too many five drops. Cathars Crusade might be the most ambitious one. Dollhouse could actually be playable too, but it's another slow card and yet another 5 drop, so... I like my 1 drops quite a bit. Maybe not an explore deck. Ministrants also kind of medium. Might actually play Sentinel now. Don't know if I need best Jerry since we have other ways of drawing cards. But yeah, our five drops are all pretty great. Yeah, Hermit could also be cuttable because we're not really uh, playing blue as one of our main colors, so casting it on turn two might be a bit of a challenge. Swarm Shambler. Probably not necessary. Bodyguard has a bit of synergy with flickering, since we can play it early to apply a bit of pressure and then later flicker it and actually protect something relevant. So, yeah, let's see here. Explore. Ministrants. Maybe Best Cherry. Cathars Crusade. And then these would be four cuts, so those can probably go. And then, yeah, might have to cut another five drop. Which one is the weakest one? Keruga is a little bit better with flicker synergies. It's not always going to draw cards. Vivian has the least amount of synergy with my Flicker stuff, but on average might still be better than Keruga. And then the Acolytes I could see cutting, Hermit potentially. Yeah, so these are kind of my 
considerations for my last couple cuts. And then 17 land seems okay, given that we have a few mana creatures as well. So I need to cut two of those three, so one of them gets to stay. Okay, so it looks like Hermit is staying. And then we'll give this a shot. Then the mana base, I guess, needs a quick look over. See, so we're green-white splashing blue. So how many blue sources do I need? We have Sentinel that can potentially fix for blue. Surveyor. And then key to the archive as well. So that's already like, let's say three green sources or uh, blue sources. If I want to cast Soul Herder reliably around turn three, probably aiming for like eight-ish blue sources. Might be ambitious, but let's say we have three, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, that could work. How many white sources does that leave me with? Four, five, six, seven, eight. And I can potentially count Surveyor, although we do want white earlier than blue. And then green, I do want quite a few if I want to cast my mana creatures early reliably. So six force is a good start. Seven, eight, nine. Yeah, I think these are good numbers. So the... Uh, Auto assign did a good job. Alrighty. Ooh. On the draw. Hopefully pick up some cheaper plays in the meantime, but I'll try it. Mana War's good. Treasure map. Alright, so we're putting not off to a too aggressive start, which is good. Can apply a bit of pressure with adversary. And then if they play creature mana war. Mana base is looking good. Key to the archive as well. So, probably find two Soul Herder here. Could see a Sweeper. Yep. And then next turn, probably go for a Key. Counterspell, probably to pick, although regrowth on soul herders is tempting. So what's my plan next turn? Can't quite play Great Henge. Could go Moldrifter plus Selfless Savior, which sets up maybe playing a soul herder in the future. Yeah, you know, let's try and live the dream here. And then, doesn't look like our opponent's playing any creatures I need to bounce. Hermit's also good, but I think I'm... Gonna go Savior into Moldrifter to try and hit my land drops as well. Right, no land drop. With a land I could go Henge into Sentinel. Without a land, I'm not sure yet. Ooh. 
Ooh, Godfather's Gifts. No creatures to reanimate yet. But that is potentially scary. So I could play Henge. Into Sentinel. It's decent. Or I could regrowth Soul Herder, but that's going to be even better once I have a uh, Great Henge in play. Although I suppose if I regrowth Soul Herder, I can play Hermits, but I wouldn't necessarily have the blue mana to activate it, so yeah, Great Henge seems fine. with Rank Dusk. Oh boy, this is going to be a lot of value coming up. Gotta hope this gift isn't uh, going to be too devastating. Angel of Sanctions probably has to go for Great Henge. Would not have been able to protect Henge with Hermit anyway. And a gift doesn't do anything. Alright, so they took care of one of our value engines, but there's a couple more coming up. So, yeah, Regrowth, Soul Herder, and then uh, Hermits, keep up the Hermits ability. Okay, get back Soul Herder. I guess Mana War to bounce the Angel of Sanctions is also an option. But nah. That's not what we're all about. Resolves. Also still have Sentinel to make mana. Ephemera to your Angel of Sanctions. Seems worth countering. I would get my Henge back temporarily. And let's flicker this small drifter. Yes, please. Oh, yes. All right. Selfless savior to the rescue. Okay. So far, so good. A Restoration Angel, Flicker Angel. Nope, that doesn't work because it doesn't flicker other angels. So, possible our opponent missed that as well. Could double block Angel of Sanctions, but then they just get to embalm it or get it back with Gift, so... Doesn't seem worth it. Could start flickering Thranctusk at some point. But for now... I think I prefer Flickering Moldrifter, and then I can play Thranktusk and Greenseeker. Can even get the Hermit back. Nice teleportation circle. We're living the dream. Opponent's got one card in hand. They can draw with the treasure cove. And a Lyra Dombringer. 
actually pretty good here with two other angels in play. So I might have to flicker Thrank Tusk here. But I got two ways to flicker now, so... Let's see... Angel plus Circle... Do I want to put two counters on my Angel? Well, let's make some servos. And then... No attacks, probably. Soul Herder, Flickers... Moldrifter, I think. Six six Lyra. How am I blocking here? Pona still has the rest of Angel back. Could also flicker key to the archive at some point to try and dig for like a time warp or another regrowth to get my mana war back. But yeah, killing any of their creatures doesn't accomplish much with gifts, so probably just take ten. Kind of wishing I had a Thassa's Oracle in my deck now. Okay. Chariots. Does Chariot do much for me? Can copy my Beast tokens. It's not a bad board presence. But I wouldn't be able to play it for free here. Alright. I guess we'll use a Green Seeker. Welcoming Vampire. Have to be a little careful. Is this a May ability? It is not. Surveyor. So I'm gonna stop flickering things at draw cards, probably. Can probably decline on the surveyor. Ooh, Vivian. Vivian's good. Vivian does help. Yeah, I could try and find an approach to by flickering key. So definitely flickering Thrag Tusk. And then probably flickering the key. So Soul Herder flickers Thrag Tusk. Circle flickers key. Plenty of lands I can discard. Time Warp, Counterspell, Electrolyze. I'll go with the Time Warp. So opponent's got 14 in the air. Got quite a few Reach creatures and Flyers to potentially block if needed. So opponent's gonna gain 14, up to 50. Can I deal 50 over the course of two turns, potentially? Could double block Restoration Angel, I suppose. That's kind of a low-risk triple block, because I don't want to kill this and having them embalm it, and blocking a first striking Lyra is pretty scary. Sure, this seems fine. They might kill my welcoming vampire, which might be doing me a favor. Okay, that's pretty good. But Angel still dies, at least. Uh, 
Okay, so I have seven cards remaining. A Vivian to destroy the Godfather's Gift, perhaps. And a Time Warp to take an extra turn. Can make a pretty big attack. Do I want to play the elf? I guess. Alright, probably not going to play anything else. And then... What wants to attack here? Do I just send everyone? Three, four, five. I would lose my Thrak Tusk. So if they trade for Thrak Tusk, they take 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 19, plus another 9, 28. And then next turn, I uh, should be able to kill them. Yeah, I guess that's fine. I guess they might also block Soul Herder, because it has protection from Multicolored. Alright, Punum blocks Pelt Collector instead. And then I still get to flicker Thrak Tusk and flicker Key. And another Time Warp sounds lovely. Yeah, the key plus teleportation circle interaction is pretty insane. To be fair, there's a lot of good cards we could have uh, found with a key between a Regrowth, Time Warp, Approach of the Second Sun. Alright, that was a pretty good game. Lots of back and forth, but eventually the Soul Herder synergy was too strong. And a turn one Lanor Elves is always nice. Sure. Although is this a rare instance where I wanna just play a temple, then turn two go Elves Temple, and then turn three I can go Welcoming Vampire Selfless Savior, that seems better. Sentinels, not bad, but kind of already have the Lunar Elves. And then now we want action cards. Hopefully they don't have removal for Welcoming Vampire, because I want to play Savior afterwards so we can draw a card. Auto Tapper almost got me. Nice. Alright, so hand is shaping up nicely. Next turn Angel, maybe make some servos and then flicker everything with Urion. Up against blue red with a turn to Haka, which I get to block conveniently, and with a savior that's not super risky. And then Angel conveniently draws a card with Welcoming Vampire 2. Unfortunate if it gets countered, but could get through those eventually. And hit for three, probably. It's 
So that was a good turn. Seeing the value of Selfless Savior. Three mana left. And looks like they have some interaction here. Maybe a Prismari command, kill two things. Ooh, nice. Immolating Inferno with a legendary Haka to cast a legendary sorcery. Not bad. Okay. Time for Thraktusk. And uh, I guess next turn, time for Yorion. Or maybe play a Surveyor first, we'll see. Yeah, because if we Surveyor, we also get to draw more of a um, Welcoming Vampire. Mind Flayer's unfortunate. Henge is nice. Three, four, five, six, seven. So if I play Surveyor, I give up a bit of Welcoming Vampire value, but I guarantee that I can play Henge. But then I still wouldn't be able to play anything after the Henge, so I think I still hang on to Surveyor. Take five, I guess. Although I could jump. The one one's not doing much for me. So we don't have many answers to Mind Flayer. But we can maybe just outvalue our opponent without Thraktusk. Shale. I think I still prefer Surveyor to get those lines going. Bolts. So that happens. And then next turn, try and play Henge, I guess. We still want to play Shale or keep it until after Henge. I think we keep it. All right, so some well-timed removal spells from our opponents and a Mind Flare. And yeah, if they have an answer for Henge, we're in trouble. Maybe I can wait until I can protect Henge with Hermit's ability. Ooh, Siege Gang. Well, at least our opponent's tapped out, and I get to play Green Seeker to draw a card right away. Sadly, no islands. So this turn's gonna be pretty ugly. A Siege Gang can go to town. The next turn could be fun with Yorion too. If they just replay Alrunt, I'll be pretty happy. And then I'm hoping for like a Mana War. There's a bit of interaction. Ooh, both on top. So Alrunt knows what to name. Land. Fair enough. Okay. I guess Green Seek first and then Yorion. There's my Mana War. So let's see. If I Shale, draw into Mana War, play Mana War, I can still Yorion. Sounds delightful. And then I can flicker my Thraktusk by bouncing Mind Flare. Oh boy.
We've entered Value Town. Seventeen cards remaining, so not afraid of decking. Oh yes. And then let's see, if I flicker henge, it comes back with the creatures at the same time, so it should be fine to flicker henge just to get the two extra life. And then, what do I want to bounce? Alrunds, Siege Gang, or a token? Probably Alrunds. Yeah, this was a pretty good turn, I would say. And then, yeah, that's going to be it for me. Discard some lands. And then Hench can still gain two. And it's nice to have key as potentially an alternate win condition with uh, approach, even if our opponents like wipes or board here. Mind Flare and goes after Yorion, which would be nice to flicker with Muldrif or with a teleportation circle too, but. I guess I would end up decking, so that happens. And a smoldering egg. Fair enough. Soul Herder. There's so many things we can do here. Just gotta watch out that I don't draw too many cards. Probably starting with key. See if I can pick up something useful. Day of Judgment. Actually wouldn't be horrible here. Um, Putrefy, kill. Mind Flare is also decent. Can't cast it this turn since I don't have Sentinel to fix my mana. I mean, if I kill Mind Flare, I can just beat them down with a big Yorion too. And then probably want to play a Teleportation Circle to Flicker Key, leaving mana for, I guess, a Soul Herder. Soul Herder can also Flicker Mana War and keep up the Hermit's ability. No attacks. And then I want to put a stop on End Step so I can use Shale. And yeah, do I want to flicker Thrak Dusk or flicker Manowar? Probably Manowar. And this can flicker Key. And a counterspell seems good. Bolt also not bad. Get a counterspell. Don't think I'll need Moldrifter, sadly. And then now I'll use Shale. Okay, not a bad turn. Probably won't be using Green Seeker. Why not Mana War Yurion? Yeah, that's also an option, but I don't really mind if they replay Mind Flare. Like, that's tying up 5 mana. So, probably no need for Green Seeker. And, uh,. Now I can putrefy the Mind Flare. Get my Yorion back. Not gonna flicker my Yorion with Soul Herder, because then I would die. Um, Vivian can kill Haka too. So many great options. Ok, 
Okay, that works. Now I can attack with... I guess first we want to Vivian the bird. Would you like to see what's left of Scar? Feel the wrath of Scala. Six cards left. Thrank Dusk, probably fine to attack two now. Now yeah, let's send everyone. So they can jump Thrank Dusk and then sack the token that's blocking for value. I'll be flickering my key again with Circle. I've got Counterspell backup, Hermit backup. Just gotta avoid decking myself and we'll be fine. Yeah, this deck's pretty good at generating value. That Yurion turn was pretty disgusting. Opponent's gonna trade for Soul Herder, but we're okay with that. I uh, don't know if I have played any creatures, I don't think so. Are they gonna kill Hermits? Sure. And probably fine to play Thraven Inspector. And a Sentinel, sure. Five cards left. Alright, that's enough. So that flicker's key. And Soul Herder's gone. And a Time Warp is always nice. Alright, I think we've got this covered. Unless her opponent has, like, Sweeper plus Counterspell. I guess I gave up a bit of value by using Shill in the combat step instead of after playing my creatures here. Don't think that's gonna matter. Alright, opponent has seen enough. This hand is kinda sketchy. I'm on the draw. If I get to 4 mana for key, then we're in the clear, because I can fix for double green. And I do have mana war I can cast with any third land for interaction. So if my first two draw steps are lands, or one of them is a land, this hand could be fine. Yeah, let's keep it. Alright, not the best draw, I'll admit. Alright, this is called getting punished. Up against an aggressive white deck. Not where you want to stumble on mana. Oof, almost. If I draw land next turn and get to play Mana War, and then hit my land drops from there, maybe still have a chance. I'll take it. Pona not playing anything last turn definitely helped. Huh, they've got their own shale. Okay, it's coming together. Sentinel, also an option, but this seems better. And how about a lightning helix? 
And what don't we like? Might be Sentinel, might be Augur. Augur helps me hit my land drops. Sentinel, another reach creature. Eh, who needs Sentinel? And then probably want to not attack with Shale. Can block next turn, maybe. On their Shale, make them use all sit in their turn. Seems fine. They got land number four. And next turn is going to be big for us. So I think I'm fine blocking, making this trade. Also waste one mana, potentially. So whatever 4-drop they have, they won't be able to play. Vanguard's fine. Okay. So I can Thrak Tusk and Lightning Helix. That sounds appealing. And then next turn Henge. Should be pretty cheap. And then probably wait on Helix. There is God's Willing in the cube. And I can kill Shale in response to any creature entering the battlefield. But I move straight to combats. Could have maybe upkeeped this. Fowler stance, at least I still gain my life. And I'll take five. Alright, can I go Great Henge into Yorion, please? Do I want to attack? There's a few ways I could get punished by, like... Uh, seal away. Just doesn't seem worth it. Yep, sounds about right. Well, the greedy keep in the end worked out. On the draw, hands decent. Good mana, turn to green seeker, or maybe shale. Ooh, wow. Turn one elf, even. The dream start. So I want to try and cast a Moldrifter so we can flicker it with the Orion. Not sure what my turn two is going to be. Feels like I want to play Shale. And then if that gets killed by removal, that's fine. So red whites. They didn't have a turn two play, but they've got a few options on three it seems. So let's say they kill Shale. Probably still play Green Seeker next turn. I really hope to hit a land for Moldrifter. It's gonna be a boss ray instead. That's fine. Alright, land is great. So, yeah. Plan's pretty simple here. No peace for the and next turn, hopefully, Moldrifter time. Opponent looking menacingly at Shale. And now Green Seeker. Shale down. 
That's fine. Still have our Green Seeker to block and attack. Now that we don't need to tap it for value anymore. So I'm liking my spots. Okay, so I guess we'll keep the Green Seeker back now. Moldrifter can maybe pressure Balsri. Balsri's lieutenant is fitting. So Moldrifter should survive, and then we're in Value Town. So, probably not going to flicker Green Seeker, so it keeps the counter. But um, everything else we're fine to flicker. So, I want to attack with Moldrifter first. Oh yes. And yeah, next turn, Henge into Savior. Hopefully pick up one of our Flicker engines like Teleportation Circle or Soul Herder. Ooh, Shieldbreaker is going to regret coming into play here with the Great Henge looming. Probably fine to jump with like a Lanor Elves here. Ooh, a key coming up. That's nice. So, Henge into Savior. I guess I could not play Savior and just play the key instead by tapping Sentinel, but I think I want the protection from Savior. And then we can send Yurion at Bossri. Moldrifter, unlikely to block. And then, don't want to forget about gaining life with Henge end of turn. Use Green Seeker. Next turn, Key. Hopefully find some goodies like Time Warp. Can probably take five now. Even an Ember Cleave wouldn't be lethal. Although that would be problematic. And yeah, we've got a lot of good cards we can find with uh, Key. Yurion, probably worth protecting. And with a Sentinel, I can potentially cast some of the multicolor cards off uh, key right away. Hermit's not bad. Counterspell, Doomblade, Cruising Grip. Doomblade's good too. Although Counterspell kind of gives you that warm, fuzzy feeling of safety. Alright, and then... Probably just pass with Counterspell and Hermit available. 
no need to attack here, we're gonna outvalue our opponent if we can stay alive. Yeah, it's probably worth countering. Chandler attacking. Alright, I guess it has to attack. That makes sense. Thranktus looking good. And an Augur of Autumn is not bad. Uh, I guess I'll play the land so I can keep up blue mana for Hermits. And it's probably time to get a bit more aggressive. Yeah, Great Henge is a pretty good magic card. Twelve cards left. Opponent splashing black apparently. Green Seeker plus Augur also a good combo. Letting us get to his extra lands off the top of our deck. Alright, so I guess they wanna prevent me from using the hermits. So I'm kind of scared. Three mana, is this like an Anger of the Gods incoming? Would be a little surprising. And actually not that bank breaking either. Alright, fair enough. Yeah, that should probably win the game here. So, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, so 5 times. That's probably enough. And uh, I think we've got lethal. GG's. We're on the play with a solid hand. I think I might even uh, just curve out Savior Green Seeker Augur. Still probably Green Seeker. Don't have Coven enabled if we play Augur, but we'll be pretty close. And then Green Seeker Augur, good combo as well, as we mentioned. So I'll play Augur first, and then I can decide whether or not Green Seeker attacks or activates. I guess we're activating. Going in mono green so far. So it looks like we found the ramp deck after all. Unfortunately for you, they're quite hungry. So I could upkeep stop so I can get guaranteed value of Green Seeker. Seems worth it. And a Soul Herder looks good. 
and surveyor. Alrighty, so there's nothing in play necessarily worth flickering, but playing Soul Herder starts growing the team. So could go Soul Herder Sentinel, or I can get the double blue going for Hermit, although playing Sentinel also kind of makes double blue in a way. And then Savior to protect Soul Herder is nice. Just want to start picking up those plus one counters on Soul Herder. Oof, Ren and Seven's rough, especially when we had a Hermit in hand, but just didn't have the double blue to stop it in time. But if we find a Mana War, we're gonna have a field day here. So I'll put an upkeep stop in case we want a Green Seek. Draw. Ooh, Hench. Hench I do want. So I don't want to shuffle with Surveyor. Probably just Hermit. And uh, that's it. Can still play my tap plan just to get it out of the way, but I'll keep on top. And doesn't matter what we flicker. But we might be able to use a Hermit plus Soul Herder combo now to keep countering non creatures. Oof, Ulamog, Hornet Queen, Gargroth, opponent's going big. They've got a nice looking green deck here. And we just need to find our Mana War, some other ways to interact, and eventually pressure their Planeswalkers. Just didn't want to play Surveyor, because we know there's a Henge on top that I don't want to shuffle away. Nine nine Trample, yeah, that hurts. Gets around my Trump Blockers. That's gonna probably force my hand on Savior. It could also just go for double counters. And then next turn I'm going to be facing a ton of trample damage and it's probably going to be too much for me to handle. Alright, that also works. Moldrifter. Second Henge. Or I can Moldrifter. Feels like I need to Moldrifter and try and find a bit of interaction. Let's see. Yeah, I do have the option of evoking it too, but then of course we don't get the Soul Herder value. I think I still just cast it. If I play Henge first, I could also evoke, but then most of my creatures are tapped. Circle, yeah, the main circle is going to be nice. Just don't think I'm going to have the time to deploy it. Can't pressure enough planeswalkers here. Oh well, at least I get to die with a lot of cards in hand. So can't be too upset. There's key to the archive as well. Don't think I'm going to have enough mana for key into a uh, time warp next turn if I somehow survive. So, 13 points of trample. And they've got their own great henge. Alright, got to give it to the opponent. Their deck looks pretty stacked. So no shame in going down here. I'm surprised they didn't go all out. 13 points of trample. I'm at 9. 
So let's say I block with Augur. Green Seeker, that's six. That would let me survive. Not gonna beat a pump spell here. Yeah, it's actually the trample from Garrick that's making the difference. Seek us chariots. Yeah, they've got all the staples. So, like my only imaginary hope is if I somehow had a a mana war I could flicker once or twice. So what's the way I can draw into one? If I play key, the best I can do is like play removal spell, which I don't think is going to be enough. Not enough for time warp. I guess key into day of judgment could do it. Still not great for me, since I die to any creature crewing chariots, which I guess Garruk can do that, so... Yeah, key into Day of Judgment actually doesn't do it. So... Yeah, doesn't leave many options, does it? Can try and draw with Henge. Henge into Shale. And then I could technically still draw Manowar. Ah, oh, no man of war, sadly. All right, I guess we're dead. Actually, probably wanted to use Moldrifter here since Moldrifter can't attack anyway. And I was gonna flicker Moldrifter with Soul Herder, but still gonna leave me. Dead on board. Alright. GG's. I get to die with nine cards in hand, and you know what? I'm gonna concede. So I get to die with more cards in hand than just seven. Save the opponent some time. But yeah, that was a fun cube draft. Got to see the entire deck in action. Probably cast every single spell in the deck at some point. And we made our entry fee back, which is what matters. Plus a uh, couple temples I already have. Alright, that was a good time. Got some packs to crack. Glorious Sunrise. Haven't quite uh, gotten this to work and constructed yet, but maybe one day. But yeah, it's been uh, fun. Hope you enjoyed. And as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.